Programmers love arguing. Tabs versus spaces, Vim versus Emacs, dark theme versus people who are wrong. But nothing sparks rage quite like, what's the best programming language? Except for the question, what's the best systems programming language? Rust devs will rewrite your entire project just to avoid a null. C devs will say Rust is can- <clears throat> Can I say that? C++ devs are still debating which smart pointer is safe. Go devs are just afraid of semicolons and OOP. And Zig devs are busy rewriting your entire build system because they can't find a job. So to settle nothing at all, I built the same CLI task manager in each of these five programming languages. So let's start with C. Not because I want to, but because I value my safety and C devs are passionate. C was born in the 70s and it built Unix, Linux, Git, everything really, including your seg faults. And we're building the CLI task manager that can add tasks, list them, mark them as done, and store them all in a text file. First, our data model. This is how you define a struct in C, basically a poor man's class without methods. Fixed size array for description, no dynamic strings. You don't get fancy memory management, you get a number. 256 bytes, hope it's enough. And we need a way to store tasks. Here, we're allocating space on the heap manually. You control where it's stored, how big it is, and what happens when it overflows. No bounds checks, no garbage collection, no safety nets. And if we run out of space, we'll use this common C pattern. Start small, then reallocate when you need to grow. There's no VEC, no array list. You are the memory manager. And when you're done, you have to remember to free it yourself. Reading tasks from a file, this is C style file parsing. Zero parsing helpers. You manually tell it exactly what to expect. And that line there means read everything until the new line. And if the file structure breaks, that's your fault. To add a new task, we're appending to the file. No JSON, no serialization, just plain text. And yeah, the copy string here, insecure by default. Welcome to C. We'll list the tasks in a simple for loop. No templating engine, no fancy front end, just a for loop, a print statement, and raw output. We'll do this to mark when it is complete. Then we need to rewrite the file from scratch. This is C. Fast, brutal. If it breaks, it's on you. Now let's take a look at C++, the overachieving child of C, or at least it tries to be. So here's our C++ version. It gives us real strings and vectors that grow automatically, no malloc, no realloc, no fixed size buffers, and loading tasks looks dramatically different. You see that? No f open, no f scan f, no manual buffer management, and when the function ends, the file closes automatically. No f close needed. This is Ray, R-A-I-I, -I, resource acquisition is initialization. Honestly, one of C++'s greatest gifts. For iterating over tasks, we get range-based for loops, but C++ is also the land of options. You want to make this more complex? You can. C++ also gives us memory safety with smart pointers. No manual delete, no memory leaks, it cleans up after itself. And this is just the beginning. C++ offers lambdas, exceptions, templates, and 30 plus years of accumulated features. And here's how Rust's task manager compares to C++. The biggest difference, that little question mark operator there. It unwraps the successful result or immediate returns the error, has explicit error handling built right in. And Rust makes you constantly think about who owns this data, who's borrowing this data, and is this data being mutated? Because everything is immutable by default. And notice the pattern matching here. In Rust, there are no nulls, only explicitly handled option types. And Go is what happens when C++ developers rage quit because they're afraid of semicolons and object-oriented programming. Here's how Go's task manager compares to the Rust one. You see the difference? Go handles errors by returning them explicitly and forcing you to check. Compared to Rust's operator, it's more verbose, but also more obvious. Go simplifies everything. That's the beauty of Go. No lifetimes, no ownership model, no borrow checker. Ooh, no borrow checker. Just a garbage collector that cleans up after you, which as a Java dev, I really appreciate. And adding a task is just so refreshingly simple. No worrying about ownership transfer or cloning. The slice grows automatically. And Go famous famously has no ternary operator. You use full list statements. Go is like a, uh, it's like a, it's like a 90s Honda Civic, right? It's, it's reliable, it's boring, but it, it gets the job done. And zig is what happens when you take C and make it stricter and, and maybe a little angrier. And you can compare zig to the Go code right here, but I really want to compare it to the original C code. The most noticeable difference, that allocator parameter right there. Zig doesn't hide memory management. You explicitly pass in your allocator of choice. You have total control, total responsibility, and you see that defer file close right there? It ensures the 
file gets closed at the end of the function, no matter how we exit. No more forgetting to call fclose. Air handling is explicit with try, but unlike Rust, there's no borrow checker, just explicit memory management. And look at marking a task complete. That task syntax means I'm taking a pointer to this task so I can mutate it. No implicit references, no hidden behavior. And although zig is more strict than C, it still has the same edge. There are no handrails, but there is a compiler whispering in your ear, I believe in you, but if you mess up, it's your fault. So which one should you use? Whichever one hurts least for your use case. But if you really want to understand why C gives you nightmares and Rust gives you trust issues, you need to check out the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org. Because Brilliant is one of the best ways to figure out how to actually think like a programmer, not just, you know, memorize syntax, but break down problems, debug logic, kind of train that aha muscle whenever something breaks, you're like, oh, I know why that broke. And what's awesome about it is it's all interactive. So you're not watching videos passively, Sorry, I didn't mean to call you out like that, okay. But you're solving hands-on puzzles in math, science, and computer science. In that learning method, it's proven, based on science, to be six times more effective than lectures. Yes, I looked it up. What do you want? They've got an entire thinking and code course that teaches you how to approach problems like a real dev, even if you're just starting out. And their Python courses let you build working programs from day one, no setup required. And right now, you can try Brilliant for free for 30 days when using my link in the top of the description or just scanning the QR code on screen. And if you like it, you'll also get 20% off the annual premium. Seriously, whether you're into C or Rust or writing cursed Python one-liners, Brilliant will help you actually understand what your code is doing. So check it out. And if you want me to make this whole task manager thing in assembly, <laughs> please seek help.